I'm gonna show you folks this new aero rest I'm using this year. I'm really excited about it. This is the Schaefer XV from Schaefer Performance Archery. And it's not your typical drop away rest. This is more of a, I'd call it a mechanical rest. The pylons there, as you can see, move in from the sides, fully enclosing the arrow. So you don't have to worry about bumping that arrow and knocking it off the rest when you're up in the tree and that big buck's coming or you're on a spot, spot and stalk hunt. We have some high speed footage of the, the arrow rest in action so you can take a look at it and see that how quick it opens. It's dead silent and gives you total fletching clearance so you don't have to worry about accuracy being an issue with this rest. Here's John Schaefer to tell us how to install the Schaefer XV. So the first thing we're going to do is once we get the rest out of the package we're going to put the silencing moleskin strips on the pylons. They're already die cut so it's a simple matter just putting them on the pylons and that'll make sure when we draw this bow back that there's absolutely no noise as the arrow glides across the pylons. Then we're going to take our intermediate and attach that with the screw. So this is what's actually going to give you your left and right adjustment. So once we get it on the bow, we'll worry about where this is adjusted. For now, we're just going to get it on here to hold everything together. And then we're going to pull out this quarter 28 screw so we can put our side plate on. We manufacture several different side plates. Uh, because we're using a Matthews bow, we've selected the Matthews side plate. What's nice about that is it's custom made for the bow. So when we mount this thing on your Creed, one bolt's going to draw this plate in tight to the back of the riser. So it's actually, it's a true custom fit. So when you tighten down that screw, it's going to pull this plate right into the back of the riser and positively locate it. So once it's on there, it's impossible for that rest to move up and down. And we don't have to rely on set screws driven into your, you know, new expensive good looking bow. So it's a, it's a true custom fit for the rest. And we make those plates for uh, Matthews, Hoyt, and then we do have a universal one uh, for all the other bows out there. So we just attach the plate like that, and then we'll take the rest itself, snap that on, take the other screw and attach that to the mounting plate. On the Matthews bows, you want to set it up so the top of the vertical is about flush with the top of the mounting plate. That's usually a really good starting point. So now we're going to start the process of uh, getting the attachment cord attached to the downward moving bus cable. And so we're going to serve that in um, with some, braid, some braided Dacron. Uh, this is the most critical thing about installing the rest. So you'll see when I start to serve this in, we're going to pay a lot of attention to where, how long and where this cord is attached because this is what's actually going to move the rest. That's what provides the power for the rest when you pull the bow back. This cable will move down, this will be attached to it, it'll draw the rest closed, and then it'll release it when you shoot. The way we do it here at Schaefer Archery is we just serve it in with simple half hitches alternating from side to side. And what we like to do is put about five or six wraps. And notice we haven't gone through the cable at all. We're just laying the actuation cord parallel to the bus cable. We do five or six wraps like this, pulling it tight. So we've got this on, and the idea is to put a good amount of tension on this cable, on this cord, attaching it to the cable, so that when we draw the bow back, we can still move this throughout the knot. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab the bow, I'm going to go to full draw with it, and what I'm looking for is these pylons, we want these pylons to be bottomed out in each track. So with our rest, if, if one's bottomed out, the other one's going to be bottomed out. But you want to take a look and see where the pylon actually bottoms out in the keyway. And so when I draw this bow back, I'll lean it towards the camera so you can see a little better. When I pull this back, you can see right about there, they're bottomed out. And then I have about another inch inch and a half where I can pull the bow back before it hits the back wall of the bow. So that's a pretty good spot. That's a pretty good spot to start. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just continue serving. So we're putting a lot of tension on this. As I said, it's very important that once we're done, this is a permanent uh, fixed point. So it's not going to move. 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to about double what I did before. So I'm going to be up to about 12 different wraps. And then I'm going to double check the timing on the rest to make sure we have that right. And if it's correct, we're going to end up with about an inch of serving here before we're done. And a way you can double check ours is you can lock the rest closed. You can pull this cord down, push the button. That's how you're going to lock the rest in the containment. And so I can verify that when I pull this bow back now, this button will come out about the same time, about an inch or two before full draw. There it is, it's out. I pull it back a little more, we're good to go. We let up on it, the rest opens up. So now, you can see we've got about an inch of serving here. So we're gonna do three or four more wraps on it. And then we're just gonna finish it off with a square knot. We'll leave about a quarter inch tag on the braided Dacron. And we'll leave about three eighths on the actuation cord. And we'll hit it with a little fire. Burn and melt. Do the same thing to the tag end. And that's it.